All right, guys, this video is going to get into weathering and erosion. We'll talk about the difference between weathering and erosion. We'll talk about what the agents are of weathering and erosion and what that means is what causes them to happen. And we'll also get into the types of mechanical or physical weathering. Mechanical and physical mean the same thing. In the next video, we'll get into chemical weathering and erosion. Make sure you take good notes on this one. We'll have a quiz on it in class. Also, a couple of activities that we're going to do follow up with this video as well. I'll check your notes in class for a stamp. Let me know if you have any questions. All right, guys, so what is the difference between weathering and erosion? Let's go ahead and take a look at this graham cracker here. And let's take this rolling pin and let's smash it up. So as I do this, I am taking the big graham cracker and I'm breaking it up into smaller pieces, little tiny crumbs. That's what weathering is. Now, this type of weathering is specifically what's called mechanical weathering or physical weathering. It's taking earth material and it's smashing it up into little pieces. Now, what's the difference between this and erosion? Erosion is when you take it and you move it somehow, either by wind, like that, or maybe water will wash it away, or maybe a glacier will wash it away. Really, the big difference is that weathering is when something gets smashed like this, and erosion is when something moves it. Now, weathering doesn't need to be just be a physical process. Here I have another substance. This is baking soda. I'm going to add a little bit of vinegar here, and you're going to notice, hopefully, that it bubbles. This is a chemical reaction. This chemical reaction is chemical weathering. I'm chemically changing the substance. The baking soda is changing forever. It chemically cannot be changed back to what it was when it first started. So, what's the big difference? One is a chemical, one's a physical process where at the end it's chemically the same, and the other is a chemical process where at the end it's chemically different and it can't be undone. All right, so what are the agents of weathering and erosion? And what I mean by agents is what are the things that can cause it to happen? First thing is the wind. Uh, the wind, not necessarily the wind itself, but when the winds blow rocks across a desert environment, then rocks can smash into rocks and they break up. Then there's the water. Uh, water can cause weathering and erosion in a number of different ways, uh, but primarily cause something called abrasion. We'll get into that in just a little bit, but water carrying rocks and those rocks then smashing into one another. There's also gravity, rocks just rolling down a hill. And then there's ice. And again, there's a couple of different ways that ice can cause weathering and erosion to happen. So to understand these better, let's get into some more specific details and talk about the types of mechanical or physical weathering. Okay, so the first type of mechanical weathering that we're going to talk about is ice wedging or frost wedging. They both mean the same thing. Here we have a rock that has some fractures in it filled with water. And if we lower the temperature of that water and we freeze it, that water is going to cool down, turn into ice. And when it does, water expands when it freezes. And it's going to make those fractures much larger and then it will, it will break up those rocks. Let's go ahead and see that again. Here's the water, we freeze it, it expands, notice that the fractures in the rock get bigger, and then it breaks up the rocks. This is called frost wedging or ice wedging, same thing. Ice wedging is going to be really important when we start to talk about glaciers. Take a look at this picture here. Notice how pointed and how jagged that mountain looks. That all form because of erosion due to ice wedging. And if you take a look at the bottom picture here, there's this big pothole in the middle of the road. This pothole formed because of ice wedging. So just because we don't live in the mountains near glaciers doesn't mean we're not affected by ice wedging. All right, so next we have abrasion, which simply means the collision of earth material. If you remember, earth material can be rocks, minerals, anything like that. And if we can begin up here in the mountains, and we can go ahead and take a look at a glacier. Glaciers can certainly cause abrasion. How so? Because glaciers hold in a lot of rocks, and as those glaciers move downhill because of gravity, the rocks within the glacier grind up against the rocks of the mountains, and it causes those rocks to smash up. So glaciers can absolutely cause abrasion. But let's say the glacier melts or some rain comes down, and we get a little river that forms down the side of the mountain. And that running water, that running water can cause rocks to slam into one another. Why? Because as that water cascades down the mountain, it's going to carry earth material with it. And as that earth material gets carried in the water, the rocks within it will smash up against one another. 
Then we also simply have gravity. We have a hillside here, and gravity can, can run rocks on down the side of the mountain, which can cause them to smash up into one another. So gravity is also a cause of abrasion. And we also have wind. If there's wind blowing across the land here, that can cause rocks to smash into one another. And then as rocks fall into the ocean, we have water again that can cause these rocks to smash up. So what are the big things that cause abrasion to happen? We have wind, water, gravity, and ice, like in glaciers. Okay, our third type of mechanical weathering is called exfoliation. You may have heard of exfoliation before, like the peeling away of layers of skin or dead skin. So exfoliation happens because of a release of pressure. And here's what I mean by that. Over here we have this big igneous formation underneath the ground, maybe a batholith or a lacolith or something. We learned about that back with volcanoes. And then something washes away all these softer rocks up on top and exposes that hardened magma chamber. Well, this hardened magma chamber has been compressed over a very long period of time. And eventually, once enough of that softer rock is worn away and the pressure from the overlying rock is gone, that hardened magma chamber is going to expand outward and cause these rocks to peel away in layers. And that's what causes exfoliation. And lastly, we have organic action. And what that means is anything living that can break up rocks. Here we have a tree that's growing between rocks, but it's not necessarily just the tree. It could be an animal that's walking over the rocks that breaks them up. It could be an ant digging a tunnel. Um, it could be a snake burrowing through the ground. Basically, anything living that can break up rocks physically. And we call that organic action. All right, so in this video, we discussed the differences between weathering and erosion. We talked about the causes of weathering and erosion, or the agents of weathering and erosion, and we got into the four types of mechanical or physical weathering. Remember, we got a video coming that's going to discuss chemical weathering, but make sure you took really good notes on the mechanical agents of weathering. You're going to have a quiz on it pretty soon, and we're also going to apply it in lecture. I'm going to check your notes for a stamp. Please feel free to send me a message on Edmodo with any questions, or you can send me an email.